Hello and welcome back and today I want to compare two of the most recent releases from the guys at Synology. I want to talk about the brand new DS1520 Plus and how it compares against the DS920 Plus. Two Synologies that have been released now in summer 2020. But let's be honest, there's been a lot of NAS in summer 2020. Synology really brought their whole 2020 range right to the middle of summer. They've just brought out all the new 2s and the 4 bays, and then there's been announcements of cards, and then there's been a new 5 bay. But before we go any further, quick disclaimer straight off the bat. This is not actually, in fact, the DS1520 Plus. That is currently undergoing testing for our review at the time of recording. It should be out there at the day of launch, but for now, we are using a 1019 as a placeholder in this video. So we're not going to look too much at the port directly on these devices, but we are going to talk about it during the course of this video. It's just I apologize that this, as you can see, if we bring that right the way to the camera, is the DS9, uh, sorry, the DS1019 there. And we will, of course, be comparing this unit against the 1520 very, very soon. But let's talk about these two NASes here, because you know, the uh, the 1520, when it was first announced, a number of you were kind of like, there's a lot of hardware in there. And it was kind of, for a number of you, when it was first revealed, to be kind of what the 920 should have been. Because the 920, on its own, is a good NAS. Independently of others and without drawing comparison, the 920 Plus is still one of, if not the best, 4-bay NAS that Synology have ever put out there. But, once you compare against its predecessor, the 918, you know, the, the sticking with one GBE, the, you know, the same kind of, you know, architecture both inside and out. It didn't seem like a huge upgrade. Now, when the 920 was first revealed, a number of you wanted to compare against this, specifically this one, the 1019. Because the 1019, released about a year prior to that one, had quite, you know, impressive architecture. It had incredibly similar CPU and memory to that of the 918 at the time. I'm sorry to keep throwing model IDs at you there. But... Still, nevertheless, the 1019 was this 5 bay that had 8 gig of memory. It had the caching, it had a Solera on, although an older generation. And a number of you have drawn comparisons. So when the 1520 was announced, the number of you that had either purchased the 920 or that were on the verge of buying the 920 suddenly pumped the brakes a bit there and went, wait, 1520, which one should I go for? So today's video, we're going to go through the main points comparing these two. We're not going to have to go into too many specific here because they're incredibly similar. They run the same software, DSM. They've both got Celeron-based CPUs. In fact, they've got exactly the same CPU, the J4125, a quad-core CPU at 2.0 gigahertz. It can be burst up to 2.7 gigahertz. Both got DDR4 memory, although there are distinctions there. They've both got support of NVMe SSD cache inside. And they've both got one GPE as standard, but and they can both be expanded. But it's within all of these factors that we see an enormous difference between the 920 and the 1520. So without further ado, let's go into that first one. Probably one of the most early and most you know easily judged factors between these two NASs, the price. They both arrive at very, very different price points there. They're not an enormous leap between them, but there's still no denying that there is somewhere, depending on when you shop around, somewhere between one to two hundred pounds difference between them, based on where you buy and the local tax in your region. So when comparing them, that price tag may make all the difference. And obviously, if we're looking at quite literally the price tag, the 920 is the lower price between them. It just has a lower price. But there's more to this than price. It's about value. It's about what you're getting for your money. And between the two of them, you are just getting more for your money, pound for pound, on the 1520, in my opinion. But it has to be mentioned that a lot of those gains and a lot of the ways in which the 1520 is better are not fully realised on day one. But we'll get to that later on in the performance section. But between the two of them... I believe that what you get for your money, the 920 is the best price, obviously, just simple numeracy. But the 1520 Plus, you are getting 8 gig of memory, which already on its own is twice that and the maximum available in DDR4 memory between these two. On top of that, you are getting four LAN ports on the rear. So you've got the potential for between 1 and 4 gigabit Ethernet with link aggregation, only going up to 2 
on the 920. On top of that, the device can be expanded by two more expansions, so an additional 10 drives to the five by default, whereas the 920 arrives with four and can add just one expansion by adding five drives. So a maximum of nine drives versus 15 drives between these two systems. What I'm saying is that you are getting more genuinely in terms of hardware for your money on this device and the way you use that hardware later on is another way in which these two devices talk about value and price but remember price value so moving forward we can talk about internal performance because the performance of a nas can be graded both internally and externally and how you want to interact with your data will make an enormous amount of difference about what you prioritize for performance if you're going to be utilizing a nas and you need apps to run within a NAS if you know like VMs or surveillance or photo recognition or cataloging photos internally internal performance is going to be key there external performance is when you're interacting with the files and uploading and downloading as quickly as possible to one or more sources now in terms of internal performance between these two it is on day one near enough identical although they've both got the same cpu and they've both got the same memory although eight gig on the 1520 and only four gig on the 920 it's worth highlighting that unless you're pushing the device on day one or you are kind of upgrading an existing system you the end user are not going to feel any difference between these two devices on day one but later down the line, when these things, you know, when the device starts to really start filling up with data, once you've got more users and more apps accessing your data at any given time, that is when you're going to see a vast amount of difference in these two in terms of internal performance. Now, it's you both of them allow you to install SSDs for caching, which will always improve the internal performance of smaller, more frequently accessed files. On top of that, both of them, although one's got eight gig and one's gone four gig, you can upgrade the memory officially, again, for about 80 or 90 pounds, buy another four gig to put eight gig of memory in this 920, thereby improving that internal performance up a little standard higher. But once you start spending that extra money on the memory, you're kind of going towards where this device is here. Additionally, in terms of internal performance, you can't overlook the simple fact that this is a four bay versus a five bay device. Now, once you start using certain RAID configurations, the more drives you have, the better the performance. Different RAIDs do differ in the performance benefits you have, as well as the performance benefits of more enterprise level hard drives versus standard. Things like 7200 RPM, the amount of cache on a hard drive, and the capacity of the hard drive will largely dictate the overall performance. And of course, the RAID level you choose, such as a RAID 5 or a RAID 6, which is fairly typical on devices like this, the amount of uh, the speed you get in terms of read and write in a RAID 5 or RAID 6 environment between these two devices, if they're fully populated, will be better on the 1520. And once again, because it's got the 8 gig of memory by default on day one, you're going to see that performance benefit even more so. And ultimately, as you add more users and more people, as mentioned, the amount of resources available would deplete and this device will use less resources to achieve the same speeds as the 920. So in terms of internal performance, it is no surprise that the 1520 wins this round. And that is something you're going to hear largely and consistently through this video. But bear in mind, you pay extra for this. So you, it's better, but it costs more. So you're, not, you're going to know if you need it. Now, next you want to talk about external performance now this is pretty much solely 1520 win territory here they're both one gbe and they've both got multiple lan as mentioned there are two lan ports on the 920 and there are four lan ports on the 1520 plus now the lan port if you're using simple file transactions and you're using one gpe you're going to notice no difference they're both going to max out one to 110 megabytes per second now if you factor in link aggregation and a supported switch or if you're using a switch and a client device a pc or a mac with multiple lan you can get up to 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 around 220 megs at the very top from the 920 then again the type of files you use the type of raid you use the type of drives you use and the link aggregation type uh, of protocol you use will dictate a lot of that speed but you can't really go higher than that externally 
but the 1520 because it's for LAN will go up to uh, 400 or around 430 40 megabytes per second there via that uh, the combined one GPUs on those four ports inside. So in terms of external performance, it makes it very, very tough not to just immediately give to 1520 the lead. Remember that on day one over one GBE, there's going to be almost no difference, although the 1520 will use less resources ultimately, uh, internally, CPU memory, etc., to get the job done. But down the line is where the 1520 proves its worth. And a lot of the time with this device here, what it's about is leveraging your spend on day one to pay for the future because this device will cost more to upgrade later than this which leads us into the next area storage now storage again internal external storage internally and externally the 1520 is just killing it notwithstanding the fact that it's got the extra drives if you use the latest 16 tb drives like seagate iron wolf you are looking at 64 terabytes here and 80 terabytes here by the default fully po fully uh, populated means of both these devices they can both use just one disc if need be and add drives and expand your raid gradually over time maybe with an shr but the real difference between them is that expandability the expansion that these do these uh, devices support is the dx517 it's a five bay JBOD solution from Synology that connects via eSATA and you can expand your RAID. It allows you to maintain your map network drives, your shares, ultimately so that there isn't much friction by your connected end users when all of a sudden all the pathways change if you try to use a new drive or create new storage areas with an external storage uh, device like a USB drive. An expansion allows you to just add drives to your existing storage array and not have to change things later and the longer you have your NAS the more shares the more directories the more iSCSI targets the more cameras dotted around your office the more users that have got all of their data and all of their backups all running to that device and expansion becomes more attractive as the device gets older now once again this supports the five bay expansion which can bolt on with the latest hard drives another 80 TB of storage there on that device but what's really cool is the new 1520, as the name would suggest, allows you to attach two expansions. It has two ESATA ports on the rear, allowing you to have a total of 15 drives, with each 5 bay supporting 80 TB. So again, that's an enormous amount of storage. You're actually maxing out uh, a lot of the available pools. You may have to have more than one storage uh, pool there. But... I'm uh, sorry, the volumes, but ultimately in terms of overall storage, both on day one and day 100, the 1520 is going to win it because the 1520 has more capability, it has more scope. And ultimately, that's what the difference is between these two devices. The 920 can be upgraded in some ways. It can add those five drives. It can add extra memory. You can add the NVMe SSDs. And this either arrives with all of that uh, upgraded those upgraded features included or allows you to upgrade them that much more and ultimately between these two i would always pick the 1520 if you can budget it so you need to know that one you're going to use all that hardware in day one and two that you are going to need that scalability later now as i've gone through this video hark back to what i said at the beginning depending on where you live in the world the difference between them is between one and 200 nicker give or take that's not a lot to pay for a lot of future proof and they've both got three years warranty but this seemingly just has a lot more going for it the 1520 in the long run and if you're buying as a business purchase 120 quid to save yourself potentially thousands of pounds of upgrading and tinkering around later on it's a no-brainer but maybe you disagree let me know in the comments visit the link in the description to nas compares we've done a, a breakdown of this along with a lot more stats and a lot more specs let me know what you think otherwise click like if you've enjoyed the video click subscribe if you want to learn more visit by uh, visit guys at span.com for your nas solution and of course visit me at nas compares to stay abreast of all the new releases i will see you next time